In this lecture, we're going to discuss the rules for finding oxidation states. In the previous videos, we discussed what is, what is meant by electronegativity. Electronegativity. And uh, what electronegativity meant was that it is the tendency for a particular atom to gain electrons. Now, we also discussed in the last uh, video that the tendency for an atom to gain electron or electronegativity increased as you move to the right of the periodic table. So it increased to the right of the periodic table and it decreased as you moved down the periodic table. So if you move down the periodic table, the, ten the electronegativity of elements is going to decrease. So if we look at the periodic table, I have a periodic table with me, you can look at your own periodic table and if you look at this periodic table you might have noticed fluorine so fluorine is right at the extreme right of the periodic table so this one is a very highly electronegative element similarly it's also at the top of the periodic table so elements at the top of the periodic table have very high electronegativity negativity whereas elements on the right also have very high electronegativity so fluorine is the most electronegative element in the entire periodic table similarly you have oxygen oxygen is also of another very electronegative element and nitrogen Nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are considered to be the most electronegative elements. On the other hand, if you go to the right, uh, to the left of the periodic table, the electronegativity of elements is going to decrease. Similar, so sodium does not have a tendency to gain electron. On the other hand, it loses electron and forms sodium plus one ions. So you have elements which are not electronegative on the left hand side of the periodic table, and you have elements which are very electronegative on the right hand side of the periodic table. So that basically sums up our uh, rules for electronegativity across the periodic table. But how does that translate into finding oxidation states? Now the first thing that we need to find an oxidation state is for free neutral elements. Uh, what is meant by the term free is uh, that the element is not bonded to another element. So you have, for example, if you have uh, sodium, sodium has no charge. So its hypothetical charge or oxidation state is zero. It's exactly zero. So free elements always have an oxidation state of zero. So zero would be the oxidation state of free elements. Similarly, if you have, let's say, you have oxygen. Now, oxygen never exists as an oxygen atom. It's always existing as an oxygen molecule where there's a double bond between two oxygen atoms. Now, if you look at the oxygen molecule, you, both of the oxygen atoms are equally electronegative. So they have an equal tendency to gain electrons. So this one would be trying to gain these electrons, and this one would be also trying to gain this electron. Now, since both of the oxygen atoms are exerting exactly the same force, the electrons which are lying in the double bond in between, they do not go towards any oxygen atom. So both of these oxygen atoms will have a charge, a hypothetical charge, or also known as oxidation state of zero. Similarly, other free elements include you have fluorine, which has an oxidation state of zero, chlorine, that's zero. If you have sulfur, that's again zero. So you're probably getting my point that any free element existing in its standard state is going to have an oxidation state of zero. Now, oxidation state of positive or negative uh, only arise when elements are bonded to other elements. Now, um, there are some other rules for naming oxidation states. Now, when group one elements are bonding, so oxidation states of plus one or minus one are always only going to uh, result when they are bonding to another element. For example, if uh, let's say sodium is in group one and chlorine is in group seven. Now in NaCl, sodium has a charge of plus one. So group one elements are always going to have an oxidation state of plus one. So it's always plus one. In a similar manner, group two and group three. If you have a group two element, let's say Mg Cl2. Now group two elements always, uh, whenever they're bonding, they will have an uh, they will have a charge of plus two. So that translates into an oxidation state of plus two. 
And let's say we have group 3, we have a compound called ALCA3. Now ALCA3 is, uh, it's always, the is always going to be plus 3 whenever it's bonding to another element. So its oxidation state is also plus 3. So remember this fact, group 1, group 2 and group 3 are going to have the oxidation states depending on the group in which they belong to. So group 1 is plus 1, group 2 is plus 2, group 3 is plus 3. Now we come to transition. elements or transition metals now one thing one very important property of transition elements is that they have variable oxidation state I am writing oxidation always as a short for oxidation state so they have variable oxidation states now whenever a substance has variable oxidation states we really can't pinpoint what the oxidation state is going to be for example iron has exists as two uh, iron plus 2 or it also exists as iron plus 3 and at times there's a plus 4 as well in a similar manner you have uh, magnesium which is existing as plus 7 as well as plus 4 and there are many other oxidation states of magnesium as well so you, if you can't really figure out the oxidation state directly so transition elements you would always need to need to calculate oxidation state so it's not known a priori it's always calculated and we will we will be discussing how transition element transition states are calculated but let's now uh, but what we must remember is you, you don't really don't know what the transition element oxidation state is unless you calculate it and moving on now now remember fluorine we just discussed fluorine now fluorine was the most electronegative element in the entire pure table because it it was lying right on at the top of the pure table and it was right to the lying to the right of the pure table so that was the most electronegative element in the entire pure table so it's always going to gain electrons and fluorine gains one electron so whenever fluorine is bonded to anything its oxidation state would be i mean example of that could be nAF or you have HF so whenever fluorine is bonded to anything its oxidation state OS is going to be minus one remember that fact it's always going to be minus one now other rules for naming uh, finding oxidation states is one other important element is oxygen now oxygen is also a very electronegative element so it's always going to be it's always going to be a minus two it's always uh, going to have a minus two for example in uh, let's underline that for example in Na2O oxygen has an ox uh, a charge of minus two similarly in, an, in another molecule for example H2O oxidation oxygen will have an oxidation state of minus two and remember this is a covalent compound so the charge is not real but over here the charge is real this is an ionic compound so oxygen is actually going to have a charge of minus two but in h2o since it's a covalent bond and covalent bonds uh, the atoms don't have any charges so this one is a hypothetical charge so it's minus two in both cases and the oxidation state is minus two except uh, there are a few exceptions in this case and the exceptions are you have uh, peroxides peroxides and superoxides in which oxygen has an oxidation state which is different uh, so that's one exception for example in H2O2 oxygen has an oxidation state of minus one so that's uh, that's an exception there's a, there are a few more exception uh, there's one more where except when it is bonded to fluorine because if you look at this molecule fluorine when fluorine is bonded to oxygen oxygen uh, you have fluorine forming two bonds with because fluorine needs to share just one electron and oxygen shares two electrons so we have all these electrons over here 
Now, uh, it's a covalent molecule. So, fluorine is more electronegative based on the rules of electronegativity. So, these two electrons are going to lie closer to fluorine. And if they lie closer to fluorine, uh, fluorine will have an oxidation. The fluorine is going to gain one of this electron. It's also going to gain one of oxygen's electrons. So, fluorine is going to have an oxidation state of minus one. Whereas oxygen has lost one electron, it was sharing one electron over here, it's sharing one electron over here, so it, ha it has lost two electrons in total. So oxygen over here has lost two electrons, so it's, its oxidation state is plus two instead of the minus two that we discussed earlier. So remember the rules for finding the oxidation state of oxygen. And moving on, we're going to talk about, uh, let's talk about group seven elements we've already discussed fluorine so fluorine is out of the question it's always minus one um, the other elements are also minus one they're very electronegative and they're always going to for example chlorine is always going to form cl minus one ions especially when it's an ionic compound so it's an electronegative element so the oxidation state of uh, group seven elements is minus one except there's an exception and that exception is that except when bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, because these three were the most electronegative. elements so these three are an exception so let's uh, think of uh, let's talk about any now let's look at NaCl for example I'm going to give you an example now Na is plus one over here the oxidation state of Na is plus one whereas Cl has an oxidation state of minus one but on the other hand what happens if you have uh, bleach bleach was Na OCL. Now Na is again group 1 is always plus 1. So it's plus 1. Oxygen is the most electronegative element between oxygen and chlorine. So oxygen is minus 2. Chlorine in this case is going to be plus 1 instead of minus 1. And we will discuss how we found out that this is plus 1 because oxygen is bonding to is gaining one electron from sodium. So therefore, it's also stealing when oxygen and chlorine are sharing electrons. Oxygen is also stealing one electron from chlorine as well. So one electron from chlorine is lost because oxygen is the most electronegative element. So it's going to steal an electron from sodium as well as chlorine. So this results in chlorine having an oxidation state of plus one. So we have dealt with group seven. And last but not the least, and, and actually the most important one is hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is a very electropositive element. So hydrogen always forms and uh, has an oxidation state of plus one. For example, in HCl, chlorine is way more electronegative than hydrogen. So the two electrons being shared will lie closer to chlorine. So hydrogen, the electron that belonged to hydrogen would be lying further away from hydrogen. So in a way, hydrogen would get a plus one charge and a minus one charge on chlorine. In reality, this is not true because these are hypothetical charges. It's a covalent bond. But remember this fact that hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one because it's a very electropositive element. But there are a few exceptions with hydrogen as well. And those exceptions are uh, metal hydrides. Now, metal hydrides are, for example, you have sodium hydride and sodium hydride. Sodium is the one which is going to, it's more electronegative. Sodium loses an electron and forms plus one, whereas hydrogen gains an electron and forms minus one. So in metal hydrides, hydrogen has an oxidation state of minus one instead of the more common one, which is plus one. So these are the basic rules of finding oxidation states. In the next lecture, we are going to deal 
with uh, uh, how to find oxidation states of elements which we are not sure of because we have only discussed a few ox a few elements whose oxidation states we are sure of. Uh, for example, we don't know what sulfur, what what's uh, oxidation state of phosphorus, what's the oxidation state of carbon, what about the transition metals. So we're going to talk and discuss about how to find the oxidation states of different elements in a compound and how to calculate the missing oxidation states.